thank you everyone really for coming. Uh, honored that all of you showed up on a cold night. Um, and I guess. Uh, so yeah, my name is uh, Kenji Hoshine for those of you who I've never met or know. Um, I just do a whole background thing. I, I was born in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, in 1977, uh, came to this country when I was three years old. Um, my family uh, moved to New Jersey, primarily uh, Brooklyn County, where I sort of spent. We initially went to Fort Lee, uh, and, which is the first town across the George Washington Bridge into Jersey. Uh, and then uh, at, at around fourth grade, I moved to uh, the town of Wonka. Oh, I'm more. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the next town. Yeah, and then, and then I also went to Malwa and Ruby. Yeah. Any other Jersey? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jersey Park. Um, so, yeah, I, I grew up mainly in Jersey. Uh, you know, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, and then I ended up at a School of Visual Arts uh, here in New York City. <laughs> You're going this <laughs> way. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I got my BFA uh, at SBA. And after that, uh, you know, I, I did a little bit of freelance illustration work and things like that uh, alongside painting. And then after a little while, I just cut ties with sort of the illustration movement and I got a painting. And <laughs> Today, I just kind of fast forward uh, time on my life. Um, what about Brad? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, so, late, later or more, more current, uh, I, I, I used to teach at Brad. Uh, I taught, uh, this is my old colleague, uh, Chang Park. He, he actually got me into, into Brad Institute. Um, I used to teach there, I was there up until last semester. Uh, I taught there for about eight or nine weeks. And uh, I was in the School of Design. Teaching. I so teaching. I said, I oh, did you okay? Anyone crap? Crap, crap, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you have a big crap following, I can tell, but they all come to the show. Oh, do they? Okay, I, mean, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I guess I didn't you know, defend them, and they <laughs> like me enough. And no, they're a very big fan. So I appreciate that. So, yeah, I taught at Crap for about even nine years. Um, and, yeah, you know, I, while I was teaching there, I was. I was the entire time. Uh, about, is it July or so? Well, you, you came and did a studio visit February? Uh, did, there was snow on the ground? I, was, I, was I to think so. R roughly around that time? They, uh, yeah, snowstorm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. She sent me her picture. Okay. Like, oh my God. <laughs> 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 okay. Call up and went over to a studio mm. and told him I was working with you. So, yeah, it was just a guy that we were forcing some <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they came, they checked out the work, um, and then they uh, offered me the show over the summer, I don't know the exact time out there, I kind of forget, over the summer, and I think I started around August of this show, so roughly about five months before the uh, I'm a slow painter, <laughs> unfortunately, so um, I, I kind of had to keep myself on schedule, <laughs> self motivation on schedule, so I don't lack time. Luckily, I was able to finish everything on time and uh, to my satisfaction as well, which is probably more important. So it kind of worked out in the end. Um, yeah, so, you know, as you can kind of see, there's sort of uh, similar colors, uh, mark making, probably organic shapes that are repeated in some of these paintings. Um, but I, I need to kind of say that there is no uh, kind of narrative thread that's going throughout all of them. Um, of course, you are open to you know, interpret it however you want to interpret these paintings as you can you know, sort of storylines. And, 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 and uh, I, I kind of like that when you do that with my paintings. Uh, of course, I have my own uh, narratives and you know, things about these paintings that you know, I hold uh, in importance or of importance. But, um, I usually don't like that. <laughs> it's not like some secret or you know, anything like that. But I, I really honestly love to hear uh, other 
people's opinions or takes on online paintings, and usually they're a lot more interesting than what I have in digital. It's, it's kind of like, I, I liken it to a, like a song. You know, you listen to a song, there are lyrics, and then you of course understand them, and the songwriter has their own take on what the, what the song is about. But you know, you put yourself in these songs as well. You, know, you kind of morph into like that, the protagonist in the song or whatever, and you imagine, if you don't know what song, you, Imagine your, you know, past, uh, you know, uh, love life or whatever, and you know, you kind of make it your own. I, I hope that you know, all of you can do that with these paintings as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can keep rambling on. I mean, if, if you have any questions about them, it's, uh, along, you know, alongside all the time. I want to make one comment about sure. that because um, in this show, interestingly <laughs> enough, the, the, these works have been selling not only in America but. Uh, in Asia, in Europe, there, there's a universal appeal to <clears throat> these works, and uh, th there's just a variety of people who have been attracted to the work who had not known it before. <clears throat> so I find it very interesting that there's something universal in whatever you're doing here. It's it's hitting a chord that crosses over, transcends any kind of you know. I, I you know I I can't help but you know, credit Instagram a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of like that. That's a, it's a global app, and people around the world use it. I, I, I do get uh, followers and messages from people all, all around the world. You know, ninety nine percent of the time they're not the ones buying it or collecting my work. But you know, it's always nice to hear from them and uh, have nice words to say about my work and, and uh, what they see on my on Instagram page. So it's, it's always good to hear. But you know, I'm, I'm glad that there is a universal appeal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Asia, yeah, Asia is a, is, a, is a tough nut to crack, in my opinion. I, I, I don't have experience there whatsoever. I'm, I'm Japanese, I'm, I'm, I speak Japanese, and you know, I, I consider myself Japanese American, but um, yeah, I've never had a show there or any interest from there. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of curious, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm solely in Japan. Am I not Japanese <laughs> enough? Or, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's always a curious thing, you know. Um, it's, I, I think, yeah, aesthetics change from country to country. Any given time, any given moment, you may be you know, hot in one country or one area of the world, but you know, totally, yeah, just kind of obsolete in another. So, uh, but yeah, if I can you know, reach as far and wide as I can, I'll definitely try to. <laughs> I, you know, I personally don't know if I have a, a universal appeal with these paintings. I guess the colors probably have a universal appeal more than anything. Um, you know, some of the some of the. Subject matter, you know, the, the kind of the rough abstract narratives. You know, sometimes it, you know, there are people who said it's, it's violent or a little disturbing, or uh, um, yeah, I, I don't mean it to be, but <laughs> it just sometimes comes off of that. I mean, there are moments that I, I do, you know, personally, I just throw in things that are a little quote unquote disturbing. Um, there's a, a painting over there with a sword with a hand going <laughs> so you know, there, there's a very clear thing going on. But for the most part, yeah, I, I sort of keep it rather vague on purpose. Have you always painted on panel from the beginning? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, the, the wood panel thing, I mean, it goes back to when I was at SVA. Um, I, I, I did paint on canvas and stretched canvas, stretched linen. Um, but a lot of times what ended up happening was I, I would, uh, uh, you know, if you can see some of these paintings, you'll see marks that I, I use like a, a palette knife or other sort of flat plastic tools and things like that, and I would score and you know, kind of scrape and wipe. And sometimes the, the, the linen or the cotton would be puncture. And I was like, okay, this is not good. <laughs> you know, I can't restore these. So I needed a more durable surface, uh, and that's when I started painting on panel. Um, they're a lot more expensive, heavier, you know, a little more unwieldy. You can't, um, there's no way to make these smaller in that, you know, with the, the painters here, that you, you guys know that um, if you can, you know, uh, stretch a canvas, you can unstretch it as well. You can unstretch a canvas and transport it uh, to a foreign country and then restretch it, and, you know, it's a lot easier, a lot, a lot faster and cheaper. But unfortunately, these, these have to remain the, the rigid, you know, shape. Um, but, you know, for me, it's, it's worth the trade. Uh, I, I love the durable surface. I, when I paint, I, I don't want that springiness or or the uh, the flex that canvas uh, 
you know, has, um, you know, it's personal views, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with canvas. Canvas is great. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, still use canvas. Um, but how do you prepare the panels? Um, it's, yeah, it's just gesso. Just gesso. Uh, gesso and sand. Um, I, I used to be super obsessive about uh, sanding in between layers and things like that. Uh, but lately, I haven't been that sort of, yeah, meticulous with my surfaces. Uh, I think someone a long time ago that told me some rumor that it was like an art uh, urban myth, but uh, the painter Laura Owens has her assistants like do 30, like 30 some odd coats of gesso on <laughs> her canvases and like with sanding in between. And I'm like, really? Is that, you know, necessary? I don't know. So, you know, I'm not that crazy, but, you know, probably, like, three layers or four layers of gesso uh -huh. and sanding. So, uh, yeah, I prefer a smoother surface when I work, mm -hmm. but not, you know, like, glass smoother. I like a wood or two. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. In the iconography in your works, like some of the imagery, mm -hmm. uh, you can pick out certain things. Sure. Are these just uh, taken from your local scene in your apartment or are they just conjured up from from imagination or the, the colors definitely you know uh the living space i kind of spoke about it in the past that you know my wife Gina, she she decorates our, our space and you know we we are surrounded by her colors and that's what's sort of uh burning into my eyes every day and naturally i think they just sort of ended up in my paintings mm -hmm. um i i used to never paint in, with these colors. I, I was definitely more of a, a muted uh, earth tones, blacks, grays, things like that. Uh, but then, yeah, I, I slowly started introducing color into my work and if this is the end result. Um, but as far as the, the, the imagery, things like that, that, that kind of, uh, it's hard to pinpoint where, you know, when it, it occurred in my, in my experiences. Um, one of the things I, I try not to do with these paintings when I was painting them is to look at any kind of reference or look at anything actually. It was, it was kind of me versus the, the pen. Um, with my old work, I, I would always get uh, you know, printouts of my own photographs that I, I took or you know, other things that I printed off the internet. I would use it for reference. And, you know, sometimes I'm a slave to the reference. I, you know, I, I, there were times I gridded off the photo and you know, transferred it and things like that. Um, but with these, they're, they're a lot looser, a lot more spontaneous, uh, a lot more layered. Um, and with my old work, I, I used to work with oils. It was a lot harder to use spontaneous oils. Take forever to dry, unfortunately. I mean, it's a great medium. I think I still have my oils, and I don't want to go back to them one day. But um, it never allowed for spontaneous layering or uh, you know mark making or corrections on the fly. It, it always. I would have to wait at least you know twelve hours to a day, depending on what color I laid down. And by that time, my attention span or things that I had intended to do, uh, they were out of my head. So <laughs> it's kind of like these uh, are lost moments. So these, are these are all yeah. These are all so these are all acrylics, and um, it was a, a very conscious decision. I, I wanted to work relatively quickly, and not just speed, but just also I was able to edit and layer imagery uh, as I went. And yeah, I, I only have to wait minutes. And also less toxic. Like, like, yeah, less, less toxic as well. Yes, I'm not gonna kill my wife or dog, <laughs> which is very important. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it, um, you know, those of you who use a girl or something, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a personal preference. I'm sure there are people in the oil camp and their acrylic camp and watercolor camp and they talk trash about each, you know, <laughs> each competing medium. I, I have no, I have no, uh, you know, nothing bad to say about any of the other mediums. I, I use them all. Uh, I, I used to teach them all as well, so I have plenty of experience. Um, me, with these paintings, I just happen to settle on acrylic. Um, they, yeah, they, they just happen to work for me and work well. And, just, just for the way I painted these things, it definitely worked out. Uh, but yeah, back to the sort of the imagery. I, I, you know, they, I don't know, it's hard to say. That, you know, anything from manga, comic books, you know, cartoons that I grew up reading and watching to all the things that they crammed into my head at SVA when I was taking art history. Like, I, I really paid attention to art history class. I did really well. You know, I'm not trying to 
took my own horn, but I, I, I did well in art history. I, I memorized everything, and like I was really fascinated. So you know, anything from the Lascaux cave paintings to I don't know who the last artist we studied. Some, someone, someone probably relatively. Susan Bottom, yeah, something along those lines. It's the the Jansen art history book. So, <laughs> you know, the, those who went to art school or studied art history, you know, that big Bible. Um, so yeah, things like I worked in there. Um, a lot of movies. I love movies. Um, my wife hates that I do this, but I watch the same movies over and over obsessively. Does anyone else do that? Am I like the only weirdo? <laughs> so there will be blood in that movie. Paul Thomas Anderson. I love that movie. You know that I've seen it. I I I, I watch it, or I, I don't watch it. You know, it's a better way to put it is it's running while I'm painting. And for whatever reason, I love painting to that movie. Mm -hmm. um, my attention is not there whatsoever. You know, it's just running. Um, maybe I'll catch a glimpse of it out of the corner of my eye. But there's something about that movie that's like a weird warm blanket. <laughs> do you see, like, when you look back at your art <laughs> after you finish them, do you see the movie or hear the song that you're listening to? That's a good question. You know what? Maybe not. No. And I, you know, but while I'm painting, I, I do feel like I'm battling myself in, in my head um, to not do that consciously because, you know, I don't want to. There will be blood, like an oil derrick, <laughs> you know, in a, in a painting, or you know, um, uh, yeah, Daniel Day Lewis like screaming, or you know, what have you. Um, so it might not be like a obvious visual thing, but the, you know, colors may sneak itself in there, or, or you know, some marks or some little yeah. tiny bits. But yeah. Nothing so overt. And, yeah, I more meant like just your in, in your mind, you know, like you it, you you're reminded by a certain moment in the movie when you see something. I I, I yeah, I can't say. You know, no, like across the board. I, I definitely, I think there are moments I do see yeah. things that I look at. Um, yeah, so when it comes to movies and uh, music, I, I do have it on while I paint, but it has to be something that I've listened to already or seen. It can't be any new music or any new TV shows or any new movies because that means my it's attention. Right. Yeah, it goes right to so it's, it's always, um, you know, my taste in music grows back in the 90s, okay, <laughs> 90s indie rock. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's that kind of music with the movies. Yeah, I love Paul Thomas Anderson. I love uh, Christopher Nolan. What about manga? Manga, manga is definitely in there. And as far as I'm in it too. I'm in it too. Yes. There's a lot of it in there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think some of the organic shapes, the line work, things like that, uh, are sort of inherited. There, there is joy. Oh, is there? Really? Oh, oh, thank you for that. That's that's very kind. Of you. I, I, I don't know if I'm a joyous person. <laughs> I don't know. You talk like one. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, okay. But it's okay. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm a little bit. I have two sides to me, but I, I mean, my wife would I'm not a joyous. I <laughs> think <laughs> I am. Be careful, I am. But, yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm, thank you for that. I'm glad you said that. I have one more question. Yeah, sure, of course. So when you're. Do you do a lot of planning and sketching with the compositions beforehand, or do you just kind of develop it as you go? With these, it was almost enough. Um, so I had a vague notion of what I wanted to put down, but, you know, are, are you an uh, artist? Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, you know, kind of. No, I'm stop. <laughs> it's a yes. <laughs> so, you know, as every artist knows, when you start something, when you're faced with, a, say, a, a blank piece of paper, or a blank board on canvas, um, you envision what you're going to do. Um, but as you all know, it, it never turned out that way. I, I, I've never had a painting where I envisioned it in the beginning and at the end of it, it's exactly how I had thought of it as, you know, or it should be. It's, it's never happened to me, ever, in all my years of painting. It's always a little different. So um, with these, like, I sort of made a conscious decision not to pre-plan. Um, of course, you know, I, I do lay certain things out, but a lot of times it would get wiped out or, you know, overlaid. I see a lot of your dreams in there too. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny because I, I don't dream. Which what? I know it sounds very bizarre. Um, you, you know how everyone dreams? Like yeah, sometimes. So some, I know. I know that's that's a weird sentence. Um, you, people have surreal dreams at times. Um, I I I want. 
want to see that because I don't I don't dream like that at all. Um, I have maybe this. You just don't remember. What's that? Maybe you just don't remember. That, yeah, maybe. Um, but the, uh, the occasional surreal dream I do see it's it's a few and far between. It's it's really like maybe once or twice a year. Um, and what one of the things I I, I my, my wife and I discuss all the time. I, I see a, I have a lot of deja vu's. So and I, when I say a lot, I mean like like on a weekly basis. And it's these mundane moments. You know, I, I could be washing dishes and I'll be like, oh, I I dream. You're daydreaming. <laughs> daydreaming. <laughs> I don't know, daydreaming. But yeah. So I I catch myself. You know, tell myself, oh, I dreamt that or I, I saw that in a dream, and I I think that's what I'm dreaming all the time. That that those are the dreams I remember. These like really just oddly mundane things. Like you know, I could be walking to the subway station and a, a snippet of that you know ends up you know something that I dreamt about and you know so any surreal thing you may see they're they're unfortunately not from like a dream state or um like the unconscious or subconscious um they're they're a little more deliberate i guess yeah uh, things that i've seen in the past or were inspired by uh you know manga anime definitely it's there the colors yeah definitely um if it if it brings joy to you all, all the better you know <laughs> I, I wish uh, yeah. When you say the animation in the beginning, uh, is it more of the concept level or is it the visual? Or um, the, it's the, for me, it's probably the visual level because as far as that concept is concerned, you know, I'm, I'm a painter, so I know I'm going to be painting, you know, uh, a set thing. Um, so it's not like I'm, I'm debating, you know, how to approach it or you know if I'm going to use a different medium. Uh, in that sense, I'm a little more focused. But as far as um, yeah, planning, it's, it's more of a visual thing. Am I going to certain colors here or you know a shape here you know how's the composition going to look um, things like that you know just just kind of run in the middle <laughs> compositional issues if you will um but like i said i, I try not to plan ahead too much because it, it, it's always disappointing it's kind of a subversive thing to, to try and plan out <laughs> a, a painting and, and trying to achieve that goal it, it, it never happens for me so you know i, I kind of take it step by step and i'm, I'm a relatively slow painter steps as I go and uh, a lot of times you know I'll paint something in but by that afternoon it's, it's gone you know I'll overlay something over or paint over or you know, just sand it off so it's, it's, it's a you know it's a two step forward one step back process like that. How do you choose the color because I'm attracted to your colors? Uh, like I said it was, it was like with my wife what she surrounds our apartment with. So we, we do have like, you know, lots of shows. <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it just happens to be the things that I was surrounded by um, in, in my daily life. Um, so, you know, when I went to uh, uh, to go buy two to paint, I think I was just naturally drawn to those colors because I, I was seeing them all day. And, you know, of course, th there are certain colors that don't show up in the apartment or, you know, our living space, but still lack some fond, Attraction to you because of you know, something. Well, they do have a stage kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, th that's another aesthetic that I was trying to bring you in my painting, which is the, the kind of the theater, uh, movie sets, uh, things that happen backstage, uh, things of, of, of that nature. Um, yeah, you know, the, 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 the colors, I, I was struggling at times to make it harmonious, if anything, because um, I. Like I said, I'm not used to using this many colors, and when, when I had them laid out, it was a little overwhelming, you know, and especially when you start painting, and yeah, painting with multiple colors, uh, multiple hues, it, it can get a little too busy, or things can start falling apart really fast. And brown is very difficult, I guess. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So it was always a, a matter of uh, balance to me as well. So alongside the compositional thing, alongside the... the, the, the um, laying out the composition, I also have to be conscious about you know which colors to lay down where because you know just as as much as uh, as I wanted to paint wherever whatever you know, certain colors when you bump them up against each other they just don't work you know so I, I had a you know conscious uh, decision making to do when you know I was faced with uh, sort of incongruencies like that um, but you know I, I hope they. Sort of turned out relatively harmonious. I mean, you know, in my eyes, they they, they work. <laughs>
<laughs> so um, I, I don't know about how other people see that. Let me ask you about that. There are a number of things you have which are sort of rays. Mm -hmm. And there, there's one back there that's almost like lightning bolts. Yeah, sure. The bolts. And then there's another one back there. Mm -hmm. what, can you comment on that? What the, what the that's about? That, I, you know, I, I think it was a little bit of um, my sort of take on the supernatural. Uh, I, I know, you know, lightning, thunderbolts, things of that. You know, it, it's, it's natural because it occurs in nature. But, um, you know, obviously I, I made them sort of these graphic elements, very sharp, sort of thin, um, you know, reaching from one sort of corner of the painting to another. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it was my way of sort of uh, putting, yes, some supernatural element into the, the painting, a little bit of a, a mysterious uh, aspect of it. Uh, but at the same time, also very graphic. And wow. at times, like, they, they operate as a, a, a visual break yes. in, in the paintings. Yes. So they, they sort of have a double, double meaning yes. Yes. in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, I, I never used to paint graphic shapes like that or iconography, but in, in this case, it, it, I felt like it needed it in some ways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see. Like that, you know, you'll see some some things that look like holes or dowels. Um, those again, they, not that those are supernatural, they're not, <laughs> but they, they do um, break up the composition for me or break up the eye. Uh, so you know, when your eye is traveling certain areas or, or, or looking at certain patches of the painting, it, it acts as like a break or a rest at times or just certain like, diversion. Yeah. Um, as you kept working from the first piece to the, your last piece here, um, do you, because you earlier you mentioned um, some colors just don't go right next, yeah. you know, did you develop some sort of system as you went? Did things get faster or easier? You know, it didn't. <laughs> I wish it did. Um, th I mean, there were certain colors that I did repeat, so in that sense, you know, I knew ahead of time that, okay, me laying out this color against another color would work. Yeah. But at the same time, I wasn't painting the same painting, you know, again. So I had to start a new, and you know, when it came to laying down a new shape or a new line or whatever, I, I, I cornered myself and realized, oh crap, I can't use that like ochre color that I had envisioned in this place mm -hmm. because I already laid this, you know, whatever color down, uh, so on and so forth. So um, it was always a, a, a new challenge. Game of chess or checkers or whatever. Every time it was just kind of this thing where, you know, it, it, seemingly I'm, I'm playing within the same rules, um, you know, same surface, same paint, same colors. Everything's the same, so it should kind of yeah become easier. But it never did. Maybe, every, every time it was a different challenge. Maybe it's more fun that way. You know? Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I think that if it did become easier, I I would tell myself or realize that I'm repeating myself or I'm, I'm doing something that I've already repeated in the past, and I never want to do that. Yeah. That's one of the things I, I definitely consciously try not to do. So, you know, I, you may see, uh, you know, certain things occur in other paintings uh, with, with this grouping, but, you know, I, I don't think no two are really alike. I kind of kept it that way on purpose, so, yeah. Okay, this is where you have a side on. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, same thing I've seen from your earlier work, mm -hmm. it's kind of like carefully rendering drawings that are yes. cloudy. Yes, uh, they have beeswax. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was wondering, um, was it like a deliberate break from that work, or did you feel like you pushed that to the limit of, you know, it lost was, interest and then you had Yeah, it was both. Um, I, I started seeing a lot of people doing that same thing um, on Instagram and on the internet, and I, I kind of didn't want to. I don't know, keep doing something that everyone else is sort of like beginning to do. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. And I, you know, it wasn't like a patented method. <laughs> I, I was very open to it. I talked to my, my students in Pratt. Um, and, you know, I, I, I wanted them to like learn from you know, what I was doing. So I, I would teach them that method and things like that. But once I started seeing it repeated and by, by complete strangers on the internet, Okay, you know, I, don't, I don't want this to become like a joke onto its own, so I'm going to sort of slowly separate myself from it. And it, it was a gradual thing, it was yeah, definitely conscious. I, I was, I was um, feeling the itch to, to do something new, and I, I think a lot of artists feel that way. 
Um, of course, there's the fear of, oh my God, you know, I'm going to start doing something new and I'm going to alienate, you know, uh, the, the, the people who loved my work in the past, or galleries, or clients, or collectors. Um, fortunately, on the point that I, I, I don't, I didn't care. <laughs> I was like, I was quite selfish, and this, this is like, when it comes to painting, that, that's kind of the only very, very selfish aspect of my life. Everything else, I kind of, you know, uh, relent to, to other people, but when you painting, it's, it's a very selfish thing. And so, you know, I, I didn't give a damn. I was like, you know, I don't care if I alienate people or galleries or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, go this path that I, I really feel the need to go down. So that's kind of what happened. And it was a gradual thing. It, it happened with, in like a two-year span. So, yeah. Is that, is that yeah, yeah. <laughs> For like a manga that's influenced you, <clears throat> can you speak more about that? And maybe also mention a particular manga that you like or have changed your mind about since I guess you're aware of it. Yeah, it's uh, Te Tezuka Osamu. Uh, he, he did a, he did a, uh, he's kind of like a godfather of Japanese manga, but he did a, a, a bunch of um, series, uh, several of which are my favorites. One, one's called, I guess, it's probably translated over to the Phoenix over here. Is, is it? Yeah. Uh, the Phoenix, yeah. So, um, and he also did a series about uh, the life of Buddha. Um, things I do not recommend a younger child should read. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I think I read these way too young and it screwed with my psyche and upbringing because they, they dealt with like serious things life, death, like the cycle of you know, life and how to sort of deal with it head on without blinking or wavering, you know, just very just kind of hardcore things. Um, and I think that sort of shaped the way I think about art and the, the approach. Um, not necessarily visually, because Tezuka was on like, you know, he had very cartoony, you know, sort of cutesy characters, uh, uh, things, things that, you know, everyone would recognize you know, even today, just, you know, sort of rounded figures, simplified things. Um, four fingers, <laughs> things like that. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the manga that I read, like the really serious stuff, I, I think it, it formed my sort of mental state uh, as far as you know, when I was growing up. <laughs> is it Hiroshige or Kuniyoshi who actually started with the Wikipedia books of the mangas? That's a good question. I mean, there are lots of them. Is it Hiroshige or Kuniyoshi who started the manga? Is it Hiroshige or Kokiyoshi? The manga. I mean, manga. That, that's a heterage, so it's we don't watch that as a manga. I mean, it's a pre, it's a precursor to manga. Yeah, yeah. a lot of those wood woodblock yeah. printing painters uh, or, or artists they they definitely had a, a narrative sense. So you know, people say it's a precursor because each panel is a is a illustration that has a narrative. You know, there's a whole story going in there, even though it's a static singular image. Um, you know, and then naturally, if you show them side by side, you start getting what we know as manga or you know comic books. So yeah, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint what the origin is. I'm, I'm sure there are you know scholars who name a certain artist as the, the you know the, the godfather of, of, of manga or comic book. I, I I never like to you know give one person credit. <laughs> I feel like you know it's it's a it's a wider scope. It's like saying what like, Goya. You know, people like. Onori Donye, am I saying that now? Don Donye and uh, Goya were, you know, credited for like Western uh, cartooning and comics and things like that. So, you know, I I, I don't know about that either. You know, I I just read texts about stuff like that. So, um, yeah, but you know, it, it, it's it's all in there for me as far as like the comics I read. I'm, you know, as I got a little older, I read Akira. Uh, Probably a lot of people, <laughs> um, and Dragon Ball, and you know things like that. And you know, seemingly, like when I say these titles or whatever, you're not going to see anything that obvious like that in my work. You know, you're not going to see these, you know, uh, the, the, this manga esque figures or you know those well, eyes. Uh, 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 that feeling there with this Dragon Ball. I mean, as a oh, does it? Okay. I mean, you know that. I'm I, 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 I think it's more. Yeah, it's more about manga. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. Uh, Kind of a graphic sensibility that I think I stole from the, that whole manga book. You should dedicate that to Zeus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, you know, the, the graphic elements, um, uh, you know, the way things are laid out, of course, the compositional thing, I, I think I, I've stolen. But, you know, not, not the actual, like, the figures or the characters or the eyes, you know, that, that oh, stuff. Yes. Give you the sense of narrative. Yeah, sure. Um, and, you know, I, I think that also comes from the fact that I, I went to school for illustration. Uh, and, you know, telling a story within an image is, is always important to me. You know, I, I know these are, you know, static singular paintings. But it, it's always important for me to tell s something through them. You know, there's, so there's always, even though it's, it may be a very simple, you know, image, singular thing that you may not, um, you know, like, take too much from, there's still something in there, in my opinion, that that can form an abstract in narrative. So, um, you know, like the one behind you, it, it kind of looks like a, a bust or something, if you will, or almost a portrait. And that's kind of how it started. It was almost like a portrait. But it ended up being like that, sort of abstracted and broken apart. Um, but, yeah, you know, there are manga elements in there. You know, this, this may not be obvious, but, you know, it's in there. Um, and also, you know, like I said, with illustration, you know, when, when I was learning about illustration, illustration history, um, yeah, you know, a lot of them, they, 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 they were painters, <laughs> they loved to paint, and, um, they, you know, they, they would sort of separate themselves from illustration, like painting and illustration to them that were kind of like separate things. Um, I try not to think of it that way so much. I, I think that you know, it can be sort of married sort of put it all out there without, you know, without confusion. <laughs> so, yeah. Are Sorry, there, it was kind of a rambling <laughs> thing about my are, are there any mediums you use with the acrylics, or just, like, right out of the tube? These were right out of the tube, yeah. Um, it, I, I did use, like, a, a, a dry or agent or, you know, to slow things down or things like that. I, I kind of enjoyed the, what I was dealing with, like, kind of head on. You know, I, I love the, the drawing kind of as, as you know, short as it was, it didn't work in my favor. And um, yeah, you know, I, at times I did think about uh, using medium so that it replicates oils a little bit more because I'm, I'm really used to painting in oils. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to challenge myself, give myself like a new uh, medium to really work with and wrestle with. So early on, you know, when I switched over to acrylics, I mean, you know, I, I used them back in like, art school, but there was a huge blank, like you know, a couple of decades long. So when I went back to acrylics, I, I had to remind myself, okay, these things aren't gonna, you know, they're, they're not gonna stay wet for, you know, more than like a few minutes at a time. So um, it was, it was, there was a, a bit of a learning curve again, and I kind of re-acclimate uh, myself with, with the medium. But yeah, no, it's, it, it's straight out of the, the, the tube, just kind of no nonsense, yeah. Do, do you find that that helps keep your colors from becoming muddy using acrylics so that they dry faster? I, I think so. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, I, you know, a lot of the colors I, I, I chose uh, for these paintings, even when I do throw in like a burnt down burger or something, it was very hard to muddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there were times where I, I was struggling to muddy something yeah. up because I wanted to get, say, like a, a distressing or you know some element where it does look old or you know uh, aged or weathered. So there, there are times where I just straight up use like a burnt dump or something like that as, as like a kind of a wash over the final painting okay. to sort of like give that feel or look. Um, yeah, so, so some of the colors I used were so high chroma that I, I, I think I could have mixed in all the, you know, threw all the muddy colors in there and still wouldn't get muddy. So yeah, like, you know, that, that red, I was, that I was trying to kill that red in the upper right corner for, for a while. Like I was struggling to like get it under control. Actually, it was a lot brighter at first, but eventually I found a bright right mixture. But yeah, it was actually kind of a struggle to make it brighter. Yeah, which is the sort of reverse problem I used to have with oil paint. Oil paint is like you know you you breathe on it the wrong way, you know, when the colors get muddy, right? So um, it's it's kind of a yeah, it was like an opposite uh, problem. Really problem. So yeah, the oils, you know, uh, I had to consciously uh, uh, swap brushes all the time. Right. I would have like 10 brushes <laughs> in my hand as I painted. I can see that yeah. for like an oil, when you do the brush box, is this a critical oil? It's all okay. Yeah, it's, it's all okay. It's amazing. <laughs> you think this is not good? Yeah, 
I, I think, yeah, since I've worked with oil so long, like my working methods are still like, you know, anchored in well, that. I look at the goals now, because most people look at the paintings, mm -hmm. and I see that the painting performs not for the museum, so that's what I like about it. <laughs> well, they do end up in museums anyway. I uh, hope we, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, with, yeah, with oils, like, I, I would always muddy up colors okay. super easily. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, had a, I had a palette where I would consciously keep all the colors separate with right. brushes. Every time I switch a tone or whatever, new, you know, new brush and, and things like that. So, there, there's definitely a, a, a different mentality. Oh, okay. And is there a reason that you chose to move to all acrylics, or do you see yourself going back to oil? I, I never say never. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a good chance. Uh, so, I, I was, for a while, I was using uh, the water soluble oils as well. Like, I, I, I love all mediums, like I said earlier. I, I, I don't discriminate. I, I really love all mediums and I use all mediums. Uh, they are most fascinating. You know, but in, in this case, like, yeah, with, with the clothes, uh, for now I'm really happy with the way they work and I, I feel like I sort of uh, reached a level where I'm comfortable with them. So I, I kind of do want to use them a yeah. little bit longer, you know, and then it, maybe it, I'll grow sick and tired of it. Something like, you know, for me to go back. Or I may mix it up. Yeah. You know, oils and you know, oils. Yeah. Oils over cooked, you can never be able to make that. Battle over the So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, uh, yeah. With this piece in particular, mm -hmm. uh, I was just wondering, um, like, where you started. Uh, your thoughts on like balance? It seems like you're playing with balance a lot. Like you've got to, you've got to, you know, like the flow of the piece, especially when it becomes a larger one. Yeah, balance is always important. And like playing with depth and like, where was your biggest struggle, or what got, what saved it, or or you know how much did you get is painted over that you got rid of? You know, just like. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us like through the experience? What you just said, you just climbed into my brain when I was thinking this because it's exactly like like how you said it or outlined it. Um, upper left corner, that's where I started. Um, and it, it's not because you know it's like left to right, top to bottom. It, it wasn't really that, that conscious. And for whatever reason, I started you know, a different painting, started at different points. But with this one, yeah, I started upper left. Um, and then I, I think this sort of figure-esque thing came in and that sort of established for, for me it established sort of the scale of, of the rest of the things that were going in that was kind of like an anchor point and then I realized okay with this one since it's larger and I haven't really done it with the other paintings I wanted to create a little bit of depth of this three-dimensional uh, space um, you know it's still somewhat abstract because it's not so you know <laughs> the, the perspective isn't like 100 percent correct or anything like that but um, you know there is a sense of depth to this that I don't think uh, you see in the other ones. And so yeah, I, I just created a sort of a, a background, if you will. Um, there was a, a little more of a, a kind of a forest wooded scene in the background that got edited down to just like a couple of trees and this sort of tent-like, you know, uh, shape. Um, and then, yeah, and then I started kind of moving down and kind of across uh, these, these ranch shape and things kind of came last. And it was, yeah, but you know, that, that's kind of a simplified version of it. There were lots of mistakes along the way, lots of editing. Do you ever push any more photos before you leave your studio and you play around? With I, I, I do at times, but I only do that when it's closer to completion. I, I never do that early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think early on it's it's still such an open ended thing, and it's like, it's like a, a game that just began, you know, for me. So I don't want to necessarily limit myself or pigeonhole myself into certain things, you know. I, I just kind of like to be it open. But then, you know, as, as, as I go along with the painting, things become more focused, you know. It's kind of like a, a lens analogy, and it starts out blurry, but then as I um, near the finish, things are becoming more and more in focus. And, um, but at the same time, you know, it, I'm, I'm doing less and less towards the end of a painting, but at the same time, I'm also second guessing myself more and like the, the voices in your head start and that's annoying. <laughs> and, then, and it'll drive you crazy. And th there have been times where, yeah, I'll completely change certain things just because there's this 
nagging voice in my head saying, yeah, you can't let that you know, just be, <laughs> you have to change it or, or what have you. So yeah, especially, you know, larger paintings. I, 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 there's, there's a lot of that going on, a lot of push and pull. Um, How about Gorky? Do you like Gorky? I do like Gorky. There's a, there's a Gorky postcard that portrait in the wing of the mother and, and child. Yeah. Uh, I love that painting. Yeah, there's a postcard up on. Is it still there on the fridge? <laughs> I kind of stare at it every day. Yeah. <laughs> but we have it, yeah. So I, I love it. You know, you know the Gorky story by how you struggle. Yes. 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 Uh, I, I, I can kind of relate. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So. There's seat bars. Like, uh, is there any. A lot of um, sticks or rods, or kind of, <clears throat> kind of cloth-like, or in this case, these lampshades, or what I see as lampshades. Yeah. But I see that in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason? So I think that comes from sort of my fascination with um, the, the theater and movie sets and things like that. Um, you probably seen like a, a TV show that's not well produced where like a boom mic yeah. sort of sticks in from the corner of the, the screen or you know, in the movie there's like a error in editing and you see that and I, I love stuff like that. Yeah. I, I love I love when when we can see beyond the artifice and like we see the inner workings of something, you know, and and for me that that's what they sort of uh, represent. With, with my work, it's like there's nothing really hidden, you know. It's, it's like I'm, I'm showing you kind of inner workings, you know. Um, I, I think like if if I was painting, you know, these paintings at a different time in my life, I wouldn't have those rods and you know the, like the strings and things like that. They'd be like kind of magically floating or something. But I, I kind of wanted to, you know, show them sort of like you know, like a, a, a reveal of, 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 of inner workings. <laughs> so I, I think that was a conscious decision on my part to throw them in there. And like I said earlier, they also uh, a visual breaks as well in the composition. And they kind of usually crisscross uh, certain parts of the painting where I felt like there needed to be some visual break. Yeah, what about, like, like, I keep thinking of like Looney Tunes and like Fantasia and like these kind sure. of <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I grew up watching those yeah. and, and uh, Respecting a lot of those animators, great yeah. artists, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think I was yeah fascinated more about the. Uh, if you go online, you can dig these up. The, they're the original cell animations, but they're just the backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, not the characters. And I, I the, the background artists are incredible. I don't yeah. know if, if everyone has 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 any um, experience looking at them, but just the background, the way they they painted those things. Like, Incredible, you know, and I, I know everyone focuses in on the you know the Donald Duck or the Mickey Mouse you know flashing across the screen or whatever. But next time, like yeah, whether it's Fantasia or any of those old school uh, Disney animation, just pause it on any given scene and just marvel at the background because they're incredible. Like you know we, we don't really pay attention to them because they're just like flashing by. You know they're, they're just creating this environment for us and we're, it's, it's just there to, for us to you know believe in what we're watching. Uh, but I, I used to, yeah, I used to study those a lot. So I, yeah, I think it will show up in a lot of my paintings. Yeah. I see the past in a lot of your paintings. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a period of time in history that you that you feel like you belong to? Do you know the answer? I know, but you know, Yeah, I, I have a, I have a fascination with that era between like sort of like World War One and up until like the nineteen. And it's it's a weird thing because you know we kind of jokingly say that I was like reincarnated, <laughs> you know, in, in my past life I was from that era and, and things like that. Um, I don't know why. Even as a child, I was fascinated by it, and you know, it wasn't some romantic notion of the past because we're talking about when I was like you know five six years old and was still fascinated with that era. You know, it's like it's not like I was you know at a, you know grew up with. Uh, soda shop or soda fountain and I was waxing poetic about you know, those the good old days or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I had, a, I had a genuine fascination with um, uh, that time period. Uh, military history, um, you know, those were just turbulent times. I, I, I used to read a lot about military history and just world history from that era in general. But yeah, it was just 
things that we can't fathom today, <laughs> you know, happen in, in, in those time periods. And I think that's kind of what added to my fascination. But, yeah. yeah. But this body of work seems older than that. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe. Like, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I love Art Deco. I love, like, that jazz age mm -hmm. as well, uh, which you probably have seen some of these. Um, though, oddly enough, like, a lot of the things you see from that era, it, 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 it's seemingly black and white. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of invented some of the colors. I mean, you know, of course, there are posters and magazines and things like that you know, that came out of print that still exist to this day. But, like, as far as movies or you know, actual scenes, photographs, things like that, they're all in black and white in that era. But, you know, I, I do, I am drawn to uh, older things. Uh, I, you know, there's, there's just something about some of the colors, uh, color combinations that they use, shapes. Uh, they were more grand at times that we don't see these days. Um, you know, these days everything's just fabricated, punched out of plastic, you know, one gaudy color, and then, you know, you're supposed to be happy with it. I just kind of like the older sort of uh, I don't know, aesthetic as far as you know, things, things that were made, things that were printed, things that um, people care about. I, I, I just like older things in general. Yeah. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if, if that answers some of your questions. Well, so um, building off what you just <laughs> talked about, which is really cool mm -hmm. and interesting. Um, I feel like some of these paintings almost it shares a kinship with some of the maybe it's palette and also to your interest in that aesthetic from mm -hmm. that time where you spoke up with like Neil Ralph. Okay, sure. But yours are more like if you closed in on a section of a route mm -hmm. and then focused in on an abstract quality and okay. an atmosphere mm -hmm. as opposed to the more illustrative figure mm -hmm. figure sure. that occurs in his pictures. Sure, sure. So but at the same time, too, there's this balance between figuration and abstraction that's unique to what you're doing. So I was wondering if you could talk about where you begin versus where you end up, the okay. mystery of that quality, and dealing with trying to make sense of figuration that takes you in a direction that tells the story you're trying to tell or that shows what you're trying to portray, while at the same time, too, keeping the words like you spoke about before. Good question. Um, so, well, thank you. Um, so, with these paintings in particular, I, I feel like I did start off with a, a figurative mentality. That sort of makes sense. I guess kind of abstract yeah. notion. But um, so I, I did start off uh, wanting to sort of paint like a, a figure centric. And I put all this in quotes because you know, as you can see, they're not super figurative. Um, fig figure centric compositions, um, and then from there, I, I, I think I started deconstructing and sort of taking things apart or, uh, you know, as, as far as like some of the other things, you know, you may see birds or bird-like things, like wings, things like that. Um, I, I would throw it in there, but then I would realize it, it's a little too obvious or <laughs> a little too bird-like. You know, I didn't want anyone to look at it and, and, and pinpoint a certain object and thinking about a certain time period or style or, or anything of that nature. I kind of wanted to be general and big. Uh, so that you know you can look at it and it's somewhat universal. Um, so yeah, you know, a row kind of piece. He was great. Obviously, you know, super super talented painter, giant painting with like a lot of stuff going on. Um, I I don't think that I'm into sort of that surrealist uh, figurative thing. I, you know, not to I don't want to describe it in two words, but like surrealism and. And figuration come to mind right away for me with his work. And I, I'm not so so into it. Of course, in the back of my mind, but, you know, I, I, I love surreal art, and, you know, surrealism. Um, but I, I'm kind of more interested in sort of the balance of shapes and colors. Um, so, in that sense, I'm probably thinking a little more like an abstract painter than like a figurative painter, especially when I, you know, like the, uh, the further along I get with each painting. I think my mind starts shifting from white place and I start as a figurative painter but then end up sort of like an action. Yeah. Sort of complicated. Yeah. Can you give an example of like where you dealt so, with that? Yeah, so with this one, like I said, I started with this figure, if you will. <laughs> you know? And um, initially I, I had thought to myself this was gonna be like a very busy composition with like multiple sort of figures kind of like running around this this environment, 
But then, as I started working on it, I think my, that abstract part of my brain started taking over, and I started getting more interested in like you know, just shapes like that, and just like colors, and just the bands and strips, and uh, you know these these like sort of what accidental. Does, what does the green represent? Like tennis or pool or some kind of sports? <laughs> you know what? I, I I chose that specifically because it looked like artificial grass. Yeah, sort of like astroturf, you know, which which. Yeah, I I, I it never. It looks like a pool with a line and. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, I, I I could I could definitely see yeah. that. I like you to like to compose. How do you say? Compose your compositions <laughs> from the world record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a painter, so. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I think yeah, but see, I, I love when people interpret it their own way. Like I, if you see. I'm not interpreting. I'm just questioning. Oh no no. no but see, you're, you're, it's a square or something. It could be a tennis. Yeah, it could be. It could be a tennis court. You know, it could be. It could be a lawn. Field, yeah. yeah, it could be a field. Base, yeah. Baseball field. Where is the baseball field? Do you like that? Right? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, I, I played soccer, so uh, that could be up okay, too. Okay. So you know, there's a there's a court of it. Yeah. So there, there's like I said, many things that kind of go into. But yeah, okay. the, the, the figure I, I thought it was going to be a, a a lot more figurative painting um, initially, but then it ended up like this. <laughs> so um, and like I said earlier, too, it, it kind of folds into that whole notion where I I, I never can make a painting that look like how I would. I don't have to do it. I was saying, how, you know, however I plan, I, I, I can never attain that in what, what I have in my head. I see you next to the Utamaro for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, really? Well, this one? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Good job. How do you make your painting? So, I have a lot of, um, I used to write uh, poetry when I was uh, 20s. Well, before you went. In the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I always had a fascination with words um, in general. And not necessarily, you know, long passages or, or sentences or paragraphs, but just, just words. I, I love how certain words sounded, and I love how certain words kind of looked against other words, you know, just visually. Um, and some of these titles, they, they do reflect the actual painting, but the, some of them have nothing to do with painting. There are words that I like <laughs> that I jotted down earlier or something, and it, it, it's, yeah, it's just sort of case by case. Like, yeah, there's some certain ones that also, that, that one's called World Insert, um, and for whatever reason, I, I was like, that needs to be titled World <laughs> um, And you know, World they, they have a, they're, they're, they're a music instrument manufacturer. They're, they're known primarily for the jukeboxes, but they also have an interesting past in that they used to uh, make instruments for the, the military back in uh, World War One. so I was kind of interested in, in that aspect as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's kind of uh, all over the place with the titles. There, there's certain ones that, yeah, like I said, Kind of reflects back on the painting. I, I think you'll see certain aspects of it in the painting, but at times, like it's just something that I wanted to name it. Just, yeah, <laughs> just very selfish. Is it after? It, it, it's always after. Yeah, it's never during or before or whatever. It's always like that kind of cherry on top at the end that I, I put in there. All my paintings used to be untitled when I was like painting, you know, different in the past, and that. Psychological meaning <laughs> altogether. But yeah, these have titles, and yeah, they're, they're kind of just case by case, just sort of, yeah, depending on which painting you're looking at, there's different, you know, meanings. So, yeah. I just, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I almost want to not ask, but maybe that's why I should. There's no such thing as a uh, stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about just like how the words look next to each other, and I thought that was interesting, you know, just maybe a <clears throat> microcosm of how you approach. Pieces. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes envision just words as, you know, just the, the letters and things like that, just yeah. visually. Like, the, the meaning has nothing, you know, no yeah. importance to me whatsoever. It's just like the visuals of it, and sometimes like a word, just looks nice, <laughs> set up against the yeah. 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 Um, I want to 
thank everyone for coming tonight. Yeah. Feel free to look around the show. Yeah, please do. Uh, there's a really nice little catalog that each one of you, if you'd like to take home, can have. There are really neat yellow catalogs in the back. Uh, you can pick one up before you go. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for a yeah, great talk. Thank you. Thank you so much.